Hey everybody, Chef Britt here with ATBBQ.com and today we are continuing our burger series and I'm gonna be showing you another burger bun, the infamous pretzel bun. All right, so I've been doing a lot of research and development, trying to figure out what makes the best pretzel and I'll tell you what, it happens on the wood-fired oven. So today we're gonna to be using the Clementi. Now, the first thing that we need to do is make a pre-ferment. Now, a pre-ferment is something that you make the night before, and it's basically just a mixture of flour, salt, a little bit of yeast, and obviously water, and we allow that to ferment overnight. So the pre-ferment has two main functions, and one is improved flavor, and the other one is extended shelf life. So the acidity that happens overnight that the yeast create will in turn give you that extra nice flavor and sort of a, a dough that will have a better shelf life. Um, so your buns won't go stale real fast. So right here I've got some water. I have my Antimo Caputo flour and a little bit of my Jacobson kosher sea salt. And oh, I need my yeast. So I'm gonna start with 94 grams in the bottom of this container. Now this is big enough for the dough to sort of rise and I can cover it overnight to keep it nice and moist. So I've also got 144 grams of my Antimo Caputo flour, also three grams of my Jacobson kosher sea salt. And I'm gonna add a small pinch of instant dry yeast into my flour mixture. And I'm just going to go right into this. And we're gonna mix it by hand. Now this pre-ferment is called a biga. Um, there's a whole world of pre-ferments that you can use for various doughs, but this one is a stiffer dough. So that's why I don't mind mixing it by hand because eventually it just kind of comes off of the sides of my finger. And what we're trying to do is just get rid of any dry patches of flour. Okay, and you can even see just how stiff this dough is. Oops. So I'm just gonna give it a little turn. And I'm not really looking to develop a crazy, you know, dough. I'm just looking for no dry patches. All right, so now we're gonna put the lid on and allow that to rest overnight. Overnight, the yeast will get all happy and they'll start releasing their gas, they'll start releasing their acidity and create our pre-ferment. Now we're ready to mix the final dough. All right, so to mix this, I've got some water here in a bowl. I've got my Antimo Caputo flour. Now you can use bread flour if you prefer, but you're going to get the best results out of this double O flour just because of its fine texture and its high gluten strength. I've also got some brown sugar, my yeast, and some kosher salt, and a little bit of butter, and that's gonna give a nice tenderness to the dough. So, I've got the water in the bowl and that's gonna help the mixing process. On top, we're gonna put all of our dry ingredients and we're gonna withhold the pre-ferment or the biga um, until after we get all of these sort of initial ingredients mixed together. Okay. So just on a low speed, we'll go for about three minutes until it all sort of comes together. So let's just give it a look. Pretty underdeveloped, but a nice stiff dough. Now we're gonna add our pre-ferment. And you can see it's got great sort of extensibility. The gluten has been well developed. And that strength is just going to in turn add to our dough. So I'm just breaking, up, breaking it up into little chunks just so it can evenly disperse. In fact, I might even just get a little action happening there. We're gonna add it all in. So now we're gonna kick up the speed and mix it for about five minutes. All right, so after that five minutes, 
We'll get the dough hook out of here. And let's just give a look. So just looking at it, pretty smooth dough. It's got some nice strength to it. I would say it's close to an improved gluten strength, um, but I'm not really worried about gluten strength at this point because we want it to be a tender dough in the end. So now we just need to do our bulk fermentations. All right, so we'll get this back in here and we'll let that rest covered with a damp towel or plastic wrap if you prefer for an hour. Now we're gonna come back in that hour and we're just gonna fold the dough, punch it down, allow it to rest for another hour and then we gotta do some shaping, let it rest for another half hour. So two and a half hours total gives us ample amount of time to build a fire and get the temp perfect for baking. All right, so to get things started, I'm going to be using the Clementi wood-fired oven. I'm gonna stock a little log cabin here with Cattleman's Grill hickory split wood. And then I'm gonna stick a couple fire starters in there. We'll get the torch, torch going. So I'm going to just knock down some of these embers. And we'll push them off to the side. Redistribute if we need. We'll sweep out some of this excess ash or just push it off to the side for now. So I'm going to use my infrared thermometer to check the temperature of the deck. Right now we're close to, gosh, anywhere around 900 to 850. It's kind of all over the place right now, but it's freaking hot. We want to bake our pretzels somewhere between 400 and 500 degrees on the deck. So now we're just gonna be monitoring the fire and just keeping it going without it dying out completely, but we just don't need it super hot. We don't need those astronomically high temperatures like we would on a pizza, let's say. So we'll just keep an eye on it. All right, so it's been about an hour. Let's see what's going on in here. It's definitely doubled in size. Very happy active dough. I'm gonna pull it out and give it a nice fold. And this is just gonna help redistribute the yeast activity. And we'll give it another second rise here. Okay. See you in an hour, baby. Okay, so we're about 40 minutes into our secondary fermentation and it's pretty much doubled in size at this point. So I'm ready to move on to the next part, which is scaling and shaping. So we're just gonna turn the dough out. Oh, isn't that beautiful? All right, so I have just a little over 1,200 grams of dough. So just to get an even dozen, I'm gonna scale out 100 gram portions. Now you can play around with the size of your rounds. If you wanna do something more like a slider bun, I'd say 85 grams. If you wanna do a big bun, I'd do something like 115, 125. Just depends what you're looking for, what your end goal is. But 100 is a nice even number, so I'm gonna roll with that. So I'm just gonna round these out. There we go. And that's gonna help degas, sort of get rid of those excessive bubbles. And we're just looking for a nice sealed bottom anytime we, we do this shape. Another thing you can do too is sort of fold it in half and then turn it 90 degrees, fold it in half again and that'll help you get a more round shape started. Perfect. 
So I know some of you are gonna be wondering if I can actually just make this into a regular soft pretzel. Let me just show you how we shape that. So I'm gonna start by just kind of flattening the dough and I'm going to start creating an oblong shape. And what I'm doing when I'm turning it over is I'm pinching it to sort of seal it tight. So I'm gonna pinch that bottom and create that seal. And then we're gonna start rolling it out. And a traditional pretzel will have tapered ends. So I'm gonna focus a little bit more energy towards the end of the rope. Now if the dough is fighting you, feel free to sort of take a break, keep it covered, and address it again later. Now I can feel a couple sort of bigger bubbles, so I'm gonna just kind of come through and just kind of pop those. And then here's the magic. And then to seal these, we're just going to punch as hard as we can in there. And that's how you get your pretzel shape. All right, so now I'm gonna transfer these into the fridge to set up for about 30 minutes. And that's gonna make it easier to handle when we go to do our lye bath. And I'll show you how to do that. So it's no secret that the best pretzels are dipped in lye. Now, if you're not familiar with what lye is, it is a highly caustic material. It is not technically edible. However, they do make food grade lye. Now, it's not for consumption, but it is for pickling. It's for what we're going to be doing today, which is dipping our bread dough. And once we put it into the oven, it's going to burn off and therefore not cause a threat to us. But it is important to take precautions when you are working with it. So let me show you how I've got my station set up here. Here I have my sort of landing spot for my dipped bread. Um, this is a sheet pan lined with some plastic wrap and then I have some frog mat material here which is a silicone lined mesh material that will just make it easier to transfer um, and the plastic is just to prevent it from hitting the sheet pan. Notice I have some towels lined and that's just in case something kind of splashes or drips down the side of the bowl. It's there to catch that. That way we don't ruin our surface that we're working on. So I've got 1,250 grams of just room temperature water and I have 50 grams of my sodium hydroxide or lye. And so we're just gonna dissolve that in here by gently stirring. It's also important too to have protective gloves um, because we are gonna just be dipping these with our hands. Um, the nitrile gloves that we sell are perfect for that. And once this is properly dissolved, it will turn clear. And it's important that there are some sort of fumes that are going to be coming off this, so you just want to make sure you maintain your distance. And if you want, you can wear protective eye gear if you're worried about that. It's also important not to make your lye solution in a metal bowl because the lye is so caustic, it will burn or eat through that metal. So plastic, silicone, and glass are kind of your friends in this situation. So another thing to note as well is you are going to want to make sure your deck is perfectly temped right before you dip. So after dipping, we're immediately going into the oven. So right now, my deck is clocking right around 450 to 500. It's perfect. Carefully, gently, we're going to just dip them in. I'm not going to let them hang out in there for long. Get it right on our mat. I'm gonna continue doing this with just about a half dozen just so it's a manageable batch to bake off. Okay, now we obviously need some salt. So for this round, I'm gonna use my Jacobson kosher sea salt. Any coarse salt would work well. We also carry Noble Saltworks smoked salts, which is a really great flavor add for these. But I love salt on my pretzels, so I'm gonna just go wild with it. So I'm gonna use a pair of scissors to score these, and I'm just gonna get wide and deep. And this is gonna allow the gas to escape so we don't get like weird, odd-shaped buns in the end. So, snip, snip. All right, 
So I'm just going to make sure that those scores aren't just stuck together. Just in case. All right, let's head out and get them baked. We're going to go over off to the right side. Too close to the coal bed and you will be burning your buns. You don't want to do that. All right, so those are only going to take about six to eight minutes, maybe a little bit more to bake. So I like to just do the first three or four minutes with the door on. We'll take them off, give them a turn, and make sure they're doing well. A little sticking is normal, not ideal, but we're starting to get that beautiful color. And we're going to turn it. So just going by sight, I'm going to look for the ones that are totally browned all the way on the bottom, and they'll even have a sort of like crispy, hard exterior that will soften up as they rest. Some of these just need a few more minutes. It's a good thing I got these nitriles on. These babies are hot. In with the pretzel shape now. I learned a couple things that first round. One was not to spend too much time talking because otherwise it will start sticking to your mat. Makes it harder to get off and onto the deck. I'm gonna salt with the Noble Salt Works Hickory Smoked Salt. I love the flavor, I love the look. So I'm going about a half inch deep on the scores on these. And that will give it plenty of space to sort of expand. To score the pretzels, we're just going to slice right down here, right at the bottom. Since that's the biggest part of the pretzel, that's where all the air is going to want to escape. Back we go. So one thing I learned from that first round was that I wasn't getting enough of that initial heat. Even though my deck was at the right temperature, I didn't have a rolling flame to sort of encapsulate all of it. So this time I made sure that I had a log freshly on there, flamed up, rolling over the tops of the buns. Let's get these bad boys out of here. They look perfectly browned. So I really love the color on these. They're fresh out of that oven, so they still have like a real hard exterior, and that's gonna soften up as it cools down. So let's slice into one. This one's cooled down. Let's give it a look. Look at that, that's perfect. It's not underbaked. It springs back when I push on it got that really nice exterior. Let's give it a taste. Mmm. Mmm. Guys, it's so pillowy. I love the salt content. That's probably my favorite part. And you really get a lot of flavor out of that lye bath. You're not going to get that with baking soda. You can get browning out of it, but you're not going to be able to get that distinctive, sort of authentic pretzel flavor. All right, well, thanks for joining me today while I make some authentic pretzel buns. If you guys want to check out more recipes, tips, and techniques, you want to make some other kind of breads, head on over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. And if you need any of the tools we use today, you want to check out the Clementis, head on over to atbbq.com. All Things Barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.